The next few things I'm going to show you is some key techniques when you are constructing garments. So I'm going to start by showing you how to decrease. So you will be using decreases when you're shaping a garment. So let's start. So let's just knit the first stitch as normal. And if we want to decrease, the, one of the easiest ways to do it is knitting two stitches together. So you go in behind the second stitch and put it through with the second and the first on your left hand needle. Wrap your wool around to knit and pull it through and then it creates one stitch. So I'll show you that again. You go in to the second stitch on the left hand needle Put it through the back of both the second and the first stitch, wrap your wool around and pull it through. So you're basically going from two stitches to one stitch. So where we usually use this in our patterns is when you are creating your sleeve. So you're going from this beautiful blue sawn into your tight cuff. And that's how you can decrease. Next thing I'm going to show you is how to increase a stitch or make one stitch as it can be called. So again, this is part of where you need to shape your garment and there's lots of ways to do this, but this is what I find the easiest way. So let's get started. What we're going to do is we're going to knit the first stitch and now we're going to make this stitch into two stitches. So this is how we're going to do it. Go to knit as normal. Wrap our wool around, create a stitch on our right hand needle. Now instead of pulling this stitch off, what we're going to do is, is we're going to take our right hand needle and we're going to put it into the back of this stitch, go to knit as normal. So we've gone from one stitch to two stitch and then we pull this off. And now we've created two stitches from one. So I'll show you again. Just knit as normal, and then this stitch, knit as normal, pull it through. Instead of pulling this off the needle, we're going to go into the back of it, wrap our wool around, and pull it through. And that's how you increase stitches. The next technique I'm going to show you is how to do a three needle bind off. So we use three needle bind offs a lot in our patterns. The reason being is that it actually creates a beautiful shoulder finish. Um, and it's much easier, I find, than having, having to sew up your garment at the end. I like to have as little seams as possible. Um, so you can see here, I've got one shoulder already done. So you can see how it's finished on this side. So everything matches up beautifully. So I have this one done, I've done the back neck, and then I'm gonna show you how we do this on the right hand panel. So, what we're gonna do is we have our extra needle, which you get in your packs for this particular technique. So you have your, what you're gonna do is, is you're gonna line up your front pocket, or sorry, your front piece panel with your back piece. Make sure that your right sides are facing one another. So that is your little V pattern. And what you're going to do is, is you take your needle in your right hand and you're going to put it through two needles at the same time. Wrap it around and then pull it off the two needles. So it's pretty much the same technique as a normal cast off, um, but you are casting off two sides at once. So I'll show you again, go into the back of the two stitches, wrap your needle around, so two stitches turn into one stitch, and then pull your bottom stitch over your top stitch on your right hand needle. So I'm gonna keep doing that until we get to the end of the row. So just in case I'm confusing everyone, <laughs> bind off and cast off means the same thing. It depends. Some people say bind, some people say cast. I say both just to be confusing. Maybe there.
So what we're going to do is we're going to snip our yarn and then we're going to pull it through. And there you have it. Shoulders are seamed up beautifully. And that's a three needle bind off. So the next technique I'm going to show you is how to pick up stitches. So picking up stitches, um, I think is one of the best ways to do your armhole. The reason being is that it creates, again, a seamless um, transition from your armhole to your sleeve. Um, and again, it's much, I find it much easier than having to actually sew it up at the end and trying to match it up and that kind of thing. So um, let's get started. So with a lot of our patterns, um, an average kind of sleeve would need 36 stitches. So what you need to really do is um, evenly space out your 36 stitches around the armhole opening on your project. So real thumb is you always start underneath the armhole so you the pattern will tell you um as you go along where to put a stitch marker and um, so it's a bit of a here's one i made earlier and um, so what you're going to do is is in that center underneath the armhole you're going to attach your yarn so let's pull it through and i just tie it on and we can tie in our loose ends later on so what we're trying to do is is we are going to basically cast on stitches onto this edge of your work so what you're looking for is this little bar here we are going to follow we're going to knit in between this bar and the edge of your work and follow that all the way around the armhole we are going to Insert our needle in between the bar and the edge of your work. And we're going to take your working yarn, wrap it around, and we create a stitch. I'm going to keep going in between the edge of your work and that bar. Just, we're going to keep picking up stitches. What we're not going to do is because we need to space out 36 we're going to maybe skip a stitch every now and again just to even it out so real thumb is is you want 18 stitches from underneath your armhole to the top of your shoulder seam So we're on nine, we're pretty much halfway there. So again, in between the edge of your work and these little bars. That's 18 stitches from the underarm piece to the shoulder. And you can see, because we've gone in between the edge of the work and the bar, we've created a neat line of stitches just beside this row of Vs. And that's how you know you're going the right way. Something else to mention when you're picking up stitches, always start from right 
So, so sorry, clockwise. You never start anti-clockwise. You always go clockwise. get back to our stitch marker we should have 36 stitches there and that's how to pick up stitches okay so next thing I'm going to show you is knitting in the round so once we have picked up all our stitches along our armhole we're going to knit our armhole in the round and this means that there will be no seams again. It will be a continuous circle around and around. So we've placed our stitch marker and that's at the start of our round. And that's where we started to pick up our stitches originally. So what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna just knit as normal all the way around. So this was something that I found a little bit confusing when I started, that you are essentially creating your stocking net stitch when you work in the round, but you never have to do your purl row. You basically just keep doing your knit stitch over and over again. So it's actually pretty relaxing because you don't really have to think. This is a great stitch to do in front of the telly at night with your glass of wine. Just don't spill it on your knitwear. We've done that a few times. <laughs> so just keep going. So as well with our circular needles, you'll find that you might need to just feed your stitches through because obviously the armhole is a bit smaller than the little wire itself. Nearly there. And then once you get back to your stitch marker, you just repeat it again. And that's how to knit in the round. So now I'm going to show you how to cast off in rib. So most of our patterns will have a rib cuff. So you need to be able to cast it off to create this beautiful edge. So it's pretty simple. So what we're going to do is, is we are going to knit into our first stitch. But then because our second stitch is always a purl stitch, we're going to purl into it. So we have our two stitches on our right hand needle and then we're going to take our first stitch and pull it over our second to go back to having one stitch. So we're now going to knit in and then we pull it over and our next stitch is a purl stitch so we purl and pull it over. Knit. So this pearl.
So you can see it's creating this beautiful finish along the edge of your work. And there you are, that's casting off in rib. Next thing I'm gonna show you is how to slip a stitch. So what a slip stitch is, is basically it's going to create a nice edge along your work. So you could use it when you're making a scarf or where we use it in our patterns is to create a nice edge along a V shape cardigan or our vest. So you can slip a stitch in both knit and purl depending on the direction of the V. So I'm going to first show you how to slip when you are working on a knit row. So what you're going to do is, is you go to knit your first stitch and what you do is, is you literally just lift it without knitting it onto your right hand needle. So I'm going to show you that again. Go in as if to knit but then just pull it off and transfer it onto your needle. And that's how you do a slip stitch in knit. Next thing I'm gonna show you is how to slip a stitch purl-wise. So, it's pretty much the exact same as doing it knit-wise, but you, instead of going to put it into the back of your needle, you go as if to purl it. And again, instead of actually wrapping your wool around, you just slip it off your left hand needle into your right. And that's how you slip a stitch pro-wise. <laughs>